Russian troops killed 550 Ukrainian children since the start of full-fledged invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, Ukrainian Prosecutor General's Office reported on Thursday. As of the morning of May 30, 2024, according to official figures from juvenile prosecutors, 550 children were killed and more than 1,354 suffered injuries of different degrees of severity, the Prosecutor General's Office revealed in a post in Telegram app. Two of the children were killed in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk region on May 28. Russian strike on Selidov in Donetsk region killed a 13-year-old boy, while a 4-year-old boy was killed on the same day in Alexeyevodrushkivka, Kramatorsk district in Donetsk. Meanwhile, seven people were injured in Ukraine's second-largest city Kharkiv as Russia launched massive missile strikes on Kharkiv and the village of Mala Denilivka in the early hours of Thursday, Ukraine's state emergency service reported. No civilian infrastructure of residential building was damaged during the attack. Ukrainian Air Force Commander Lt. Gen. Mykola Olshchuk announced on Thursday that Russia launched a missile and drone attack against Ukraine's military and critical infrastructure on the night leading to May 30. Russian troops used eight S-300, S-400 air defense missiles in Kharkiv region, 11 KH-101, KH-555 cruise missiles launched from two 95MS strategic bombers in Russia's Saratov region and 32 Shahid. 131, 136 drones launched from Primorsko-Oktarsk and Cape Chowda in Crimea. NATO is practicing nuclear strikes on Russia, the FSB reported. NATO is practicing nuclear strikes on Russian territory near the border, Army General Vladimir Kulishov, first deputy director and head of the FSB Border Service of Russia, said in an interview with Ria Novosti on the occasion of Border Guard Day. Near the Russian border, NATO's reconnaissance activity is increasing. The intensity of operational combat training of the alliance's troops is increasing, during which scenarios for conducting combat operations against the Russian Federation are being worked out, including launching nuclear strikes on our territory, he said. As the agency's interlocutor noted, this situation requires taking adequate measures to protect and guard borders. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said that Ukraine has the right to, among other things, attack military targets on Russian territory. He added that some allies have already lifted the corresponding restrictions on strikes and, in the opinion of the Secretary General of the North Atlantic Alliance, the time has come to lift other restrictions. Press Secretary of the Russian President Dmitry Peskov, in a conversation with Izvesha, noted that NATO is flirting with military rhetoric, increasing the degree of escalation and falling into military ecstasy. In turn, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, commenting on Stoltenberg's statements, indicated that he had exceeded his authority. He noted that the Secretary General of the Alliance has already been besieged by NATO members themselves. Recently, some NATO countries are increasingly talking about direct intervention in the Ukrainian conflict. Thus, French President Emmanuel Macron has repeatedly stated this. According to him, Paris does not exclude the possibility of sending troops to Ukraine if Russia breaks through the front line and Kyiv asks for help. He also claimed that many countries agreed with his approach about possibly sending in the military. The German magazine Der Spiegel reported that the Baltic countries and Poland were warning Germany that they could send troops to Ukraine if the situation develops unfavorably for Kyiv. The Kremlin calls such ideas an unprecedented round of escalation of tension that requires special attention and measures. Against the backdrop of bellicose statements by Western politicians, exercises of missile formations of the southern military district began in Russia on behalf of Vladimir Putin. These maneuvers practice the use of non-strategic nuclear weapons. Ukraine can destroy Russian Tu-95 and Tu-22, a Ukrainian colonel called a miracle weapon. The Ukrainian Armed Forces colonel noted that it is critically necessary for Ukraine to have permission from Western countries to launch strikes with their weapons on Russian territory. The likelihood of making a positive decision for Ukraine was commented on by Colonel of the Armed Forces of Ukraine and military expert Petra Chernik in an interview with Glavred. Chernik recalls that a similar situation with Western countries' hesitation in providing Ukraine with certain types of weapons has been going on for a long time. In June 2022, 
When I was in the combat zone in the Donetsk region, US President Joseph Biden stated that he would not provide Ukraine with F-16 fighters because this would mean crossing red lines and further escalation. But time has passed and Biden decided to take this step and we will have F-16s. There is a hope that by early to mid-summer, the fighters will be operating in Ukraine. If this happens, it will be a tremendous success for us, Chernik said. He adds that the situation is similar with long-range missiles. Of course, we are interested in ATA CMS with a range of 300 kilometers, but the Ukrainian Armed Forces colonel notes that it is worth paying attention to the missiles that are used on F-16, in particular the incredible AGM-158 JASSM. There are configurations that allow you to strike enemy targets at a distance of up to 900 kilometers, the expert noted. According to him, a strike by five ATA CMS missiles on Russian targets in the Donetsk region, in particular in occupied Mospino, led to the destruction of at least three S-300, stroke 400 launchers, a radar and a combat control vehicle. This incident indicates serious problems for the enemy with anti-aircraft missile cover and the AGM-158 JASSM missile with a range of up to 900 kilometers can easily fly to the airfield in Engels where the strategic attack missile carriers are based. T-95MS, TU-160 and TU-22M3. The ability to strike with such missiles can radically change everything, he notes. However, he notes that another example of a Western reaction should be kept in mind. Almost a month and a half ago, the information space was filled with militaristic rhetoric from Macron about the possibility of sending French troops into Ukraine, but this did not happen and the topic disappeared from the information agenda. It's difficult to say exactly what decisions will be made in the West, but we critically need the Western world to allow the use of its long-range weapons on the territory of the Russian Federation, he concluded.